Well, let's unpack this a bit further now with James Dorsey. He's a senior fellow at S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies, and he's joining us live from Singapore right now. Thank you so much for coming on with us. James, do we know any more from the cabinet meeting with Netanyahu's team and the scale of the attack that perhaps they're planning at this point? Well, what we know is essentially what they said, which is that they have uh, identified several options uh, for a response, that the response would be harsh, but would be calibrated to avoid an escalation of, um, of hostilities. I think what you're seeing is, you know, we're most likely looking at an incident in Majdala Shams, which was either not intended by either Hezbollah or the Israelis, or was carried out by a third party, which is highly unlikely. And as a result of this, what both Israel and Hezbollah are trying to do is to show that they are sticking to their guns, remaining firm in their positions, but in a way that will contain or continue to contain the hostilities rather, lead, rather than lead to an all-out war. And James, if it did uh, actually lead to an all-out war, is that something that Israel can really afford at this point? The proof will be in the pudding. I mean, clearly uh, Israel is fighting the longest war in its history now 10 months, and that's taking a toll on the military. Uh, the military s says it is confident that it can fight the war on both fronts. Um, and presumably they would not be risking uh, a second front or an escalation on the second front if they were not really convinced that they had the wherewithal to do this. Um, but on the other hand, I think that neither party wants a war and let's keep in mind that their supporters don't want a war. With other words, in the case of Hezbollah, Iran doesn't want the war. And Hezbollah has to be somewhat cautious because there is a strong segment of the Lebanese population that supports Hezbollah uh, standing up for the Palestinians. But there's also a very strong segment of the Lebanese population which doesn't see the Palestinians as their war. And then on the other side, you have the United States, which from the outset has not wanted to see an escalation in Lebanon and has been working the phones and diplomacy, not only with Le uh, Lebanon uh, and through Lebanese officials with Hezbollah, but also with Iran and Israel to try and ensure that this does not spin out of control. Okay, James Dorsey, thank you so much for your analysis today. My pleasure. Thank you.